All right, this one's called 15 re-zero details. You don't know? Yeah, I don't know. I bet I'd know. I probably don't know, but apparently there's like spoilers around 820. 820 to 832, okay? 820 to 832, there's spoilers. I'll probably not be aware, but guys in chat, please let me know if it's getting closer to that point. Let's get it. Secret in this. Can you find the hidden secret in this scene? How about this one? If you can't, I don't blame you. As uh, this scene, the hidden detail is felt being observed as Reinhard uh, thinks that she's like a Lugunican royal, right? Chosen one. You see the, you see the pendants. And this is unfair. There's no hidden details in this scene. You gotta show the fucking pendant. It's the red glowing part, right? It's the red glowing part. And the next part is... Hold up, hold up. What is special about here? It's serious. She's hanging around. This is from the opening, right? A bunch of chains and she's hanging around. Are we supposed to be observing Sirius's like eye color or eye, like, sorry, ear shape try to try to figure out if this could be like Fortuna? I'm not really sure. This one. If you can't, I don't blame you. As Zero is an anime with a lot of hidden secrets and stuff cut from the novels that you will miss if you don't pay full attention to it. So in today's video, I reunited 15 secrets and curiosities you probably don't know about okay. Zero. So let's, let's get start it. with the rather weird one. In season 2, we learned that Russell had been using the soul transcription technique to possess mm. his descendant bodies for 400 years, That's changing right. his middle initial every time he possessed a new descendant. And from A to B is when the heterochromatia happened, right? The different eye color, the gold and blue eyes now from A to B. His first incarnation was named Russell A. Matters, and he is currently named Russell L. Matters. Yeah. All of the descendants he possessed were male, except... There's one. There's a girl version. We saw that one, and the girl version is beside, like, a blonde girl who's wearing, like, blue clothing. For Russell J. Matters, who was Julia. This, this girl is what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's just... I, I don't know if he can selectively choose if it's going to be a male heir or a female heir. I presumably he can. Beautiful. Yeah, it's kind of creepy to know what's going on, woman. Russell Julia Matters played the major role on the X2, Sword Demon Love Song. Damn, this is during the Wilhelm and Theresia era, huh? Okay, the extra try stories we're going to cover it one day. We will. Of the novels, which is essentially the backstory of Wilhelm, his wife, and the demi-human lord. And let me tell you, despite everything, she had real feminine Lady Roswell, that's crazy, bro. There's a high possibility that Sphinx will work behind the scenes in this attack. Yeah, they're basically... Uh, the, the, the biggest, like, trouble during that time is the demi-human war, right? Huge racism happening, you know, tensions rising, Theresia solves it. Aura, I can't lie to you. As the technique only works with relatives, Roswell had to reproduce to keep his lineage. So yeah, he did get pregnant in a woman's body. And yeah, he literally took back shots for fun at one point. Another thing I want to know is the kid, right? When the kid has spawned, you know, the baby presumably has a soul. It's soul transcription. You're supposed to place your soul to the next kid. Does Roswell wait for the kid to grow up? Is it like straight out of the womb? Does he make the partner realize consensually that, hey, we gonna fucking have a baby, but that baby, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna be that baby. Like, how do you think the partners feel at that moment? Anyway, one curiosity about his body is that it was incapable of using magic of any sort. Jay Mathers could not use magic? That's crazy. But there must be a reason he chose Jay Mathers during the Demi-Human War. There is no way he would intentionally pick uh, like a vessel that's unable to use magic when his entire thing is Mr. Magic. But then again, his martial arts skill is actually ridiculous too. So maybe as Jay Mathers... His physical abilities or her physical abilities were enough. So Russell trained it to the absolute maximum of martial arts and be- There it is. This is where it happened. So, every different Mathers, magic, magic, magic. And until Jay couldn't really fight, we see in season 2, Russell fighting like he's a martial artist. This is what happened. And wasn't it also told that he was taught by a ninja, right? Most likely, Volokian Empire, there is these existence of ninjas and kunoichis. Jay Mathers may have at that time been, you know, taught secret ninja martial arts taijutsu, who knows. Simum of martial arts and became so powerful Julie could easily overpower most of the people in the Demi Damn. Human War. Okay, we all know that Beatrice had spent most of her time in a place called the Forbidden Library. It yeah. was built by the Witch of Greed, Echidna, and her vast knowledge was kept in the magical books that lay there. She left Beatrice as the library's keeper, and it could only be accessed by the doors on the old Russell's Manor, with a magic called 
door crossing. But mm -hmm. we all knew that. The interesting thing is that this library is not a physical place, but a pocket dimension separated from the world itself. It's something akin to the Ultramac we've seen. Yeah, yeah, we always knew that it's not an actual like place. It's like a separate dimension and Ultramac for sure. And as well as EMM, you know, there are these similarities of not really existing in the same plane of dimension that everyone else is existing on Earth. Trapping the Great Rabbit. Can't call it Earth. I have no clue what planet, you know, ReZero is all about. That, that's a mystery. That, I don't think that's ever been stated. It's a flat world, though. In season two, when the doors are closed, everything that comes from the outside world has no effect, such as authorities. We could see this when Beatrice still remembered who Ram was after she. Mmm. Yes, this is the other little point where there was like a seemingly inconsistency of Biku remembering the forgotten Ram. So in this place, authorities are nullified, you said? Season 2. When the doors are closed, everything that comes from the outside world has no effect, such as authorities. We Damn. can see this when Beatrice still remembered who Ram was, after she got erased by Gluttony. This makes you wonder, if returned by death, which is stated to be an authority, could mm. possibly- Yeah, what happens if we die here? If Biko actually accidentally kills Subaru here, would the authority activate? Because it's supposed to not work in this dimension, right? It'd be bypassed if Subaru died inside it. Probably, it would make Satella search for his art by herself in some way, but we don't really know. What we know is that maybe this could disable someone's divine protections or things of the sort. And the fact. Hmm. Divine protections as well? Well, I guess if we just should, we should just assume that, like, in the library. And I don't think it matters. Does the library exist anymore? That shit got burnt down, right? Well, it's like a separate dimension, and it was with it was built within the manor. And I don't think Biko going back in there. I'm not sure. Maybe an echidna built that shit, so I'm not sure Biko can rebuild something like that. But it's kind of pointless now, I guess, because we moved on. The fact that Beatrice was the only person besides Subaru who still remembered Ram is just crazy to me. Even though when Biako did he die in the library? Elsa run. No, he didn't die there. Did he? Didn't we get out of there? I'm forgetting, there's so many different fucking runs, the failed ones when we, when we went to the mansion in the season 2. I remember the time where Elsa just shows up and Biko and us gets out of there, but there may be in a run before where Elsa just killed us. Yeah. Yeah. But the door was open, another good point. The door must be closed, that's a good mechanic, right? The door must be closed, at that point the door was open, so I think... There is consistency with this. The steps out of it, she automatically forgets Ram as she gets affected by the authority. And well, the library was burned to ash along with the whole mansion, so it's no longer possible to access it. So if you are really into ReZero, you probably know this very important detail already. But in case you only watch the anime, you mm. probably don't know that there are other people besides Subaru who also came from Earth. That's right. Right now we have Al. Aldebaran, right? And then there is Hoshin of the Wilderness, Alec Hoshin, that existed pre-Calamity times. The first one was Aldebaran, Priscilla's Knight. It was shown in the novels and in the manga that this guy and Subaru have already talked about people. That's right, this is happening during the arc 3, when we're in Priscilla's carriage, about to go fuck shit up from the same place, Japan. And before anyone says this could be a spoiler, even the author addressed this problem on his Twitter reactions, it's on chapter 4 of the- mm, I don't know if we can really trust, you know, the auto-translate, but Al, like Subaru, is a person who has been transferred from Earth, so Priscilla, his master, speaks the words Al uses in hiragana, like Chansu, a small similarity between him and Amelia, okay? And Priscilla also kind of calls us, like, beings from beyond the Great Waterfall. Because that just kind of means, because the edge of the world here is the Great Waterfall, and, you know, you're from a different world, I guess, you know, beyond the Great Waterfall makes sense to them. This problem on these Twitter reactions, it's on chapter 4 of the Arc 3 manga, and on the volume 4 of the novel. I know I'll get comments on it, so complain it by Fox, and not me. Aldebaran was teleported roughly 18 years before Subaru, and in the meantime... 18 years before Subaru... But still, we don't know really how old he was. If he was 18 at that point, then he's going to be 36. If he was zero, then he's going to be 18. Who knows what, how old Al is? It's probably within like 30s or 40s though. He did have contact with many important characters. I'd love to tell you more about this. But honestly, not even after arc 8, the most recent finished arc in the novels, do we know exactly how this guy interacted with them. The I just want you to know that I will ban every single person that like comments this shit. There is so many people that think they're being cheeky, that they think they're in on a joke. 
I'm gonna comment a non-spoiler slash spoilerish reference in the future that is out of context so you won't understand, but we as a light novel readers will know. I will crucify you. I'll leave one person to make an example and keep that comment up for like a week or so before I ban them. And every other single person that thinks that's being funny, I will ban you in a fucking instant. In fact, I should have banned you retards for spamming bunnies. I should have banned you for saying who's Rem as well. Exactly how this guy interacted with that. The only thing I can say is that he is very, very important. Even stated by the author to be one of the three big mysteries in the series. However, look at that art. Looking like a tarot card. I see Al on the top half. And then I see... Is that Subaru? I can't tell. It's kind of, you know, I don't know the hair. The hairstyle is weird. But is it supposed to tell us that we're two sides of the same coin? And another thing that's very interesting is this, this building. This is what we see in season three opening. The blue lit church place, right? And I'm like, is that Gusteca? Is that supposed to be witch cult headquarters? It's a church, right? A church is, you know, religion and shit, but there's also cults. I'm not really sure, but that's pretty cool design. Al has the hourglass and everything is thunderclouds. Why an hourglass? Well, hourglass determines time. Is Al's powers also time? Is he fucking Zawardoing us? Like, I don't know. It's seemingly more likely that Al has an authority because Witch's Miasma is, you know, coming off of him and he's a very mysterious guy who is very shady according to the cut content and the Witch Cult translations as well. So, I don't know, but I feel like this hourglass is very important. And for Subaru here, what does he have? Assuming that this is Subaru, uh, <laughs> he has like a compass, right? This is like the needles that points northwest, south, east. Uh, he's the one that points the way? Uh, Al is supposed to be following Subaru, right? Aldebran, Pleiades, the constellations. Al is one that follows Subaru and Subaru is the one that points the way? I don't know. However, he is not the only mysterious character that got summoned. As Flugel, the great sage, was seemingly also summoned from Japan. Oh? Flugel the Great Sage is also summoned from Japan, which is funny because no Japanese person would ever be called Flugel, right? I wonder if that's like a nickname or something, but Flugel, one more time, go back. Stated by the author to be one of the three big mysteries in the series. However, he is not the only mysterious character that got summoned, as Flugel the Great Sage was- The Great Sage. It's seemingly very likely that Flugel is the sage, right? There's a specific keywords to be mindful of. Sage, sword saint, and dragon to seal the witch of MBOA. But Flugel is known to be like the wise man in the anime. A wise man and sage could be synonyms, but... And it's looking more and more likely that Flugel was the sage that was responsible for, you know, sealing away. Maybe Flugel was existing pre-Calamity days. But knowing a show like this, where the author intentionally baits you and makes you think that it's going to be one specific way, and then he's like, gotcha. So Flugel maybe could not be the sage, but interestingly enough, he says, great sage here. Great sage. Seemingly also summoned from Japan, although his name is written in German. We know this because of the Flugel tree, where his That's name right. was engraved in Japanese characters, and also for influencing Alec Shin, one of his friends with Japanese culture. For many times, this Flugel and Alec were friends, huh? Okay, and this is the guy responsible for the Kararagi style, because he's from, you know, like Kansai dialect places, Osaka, presumably. And also for influencing Alec Shin, one of his. What kind of fucking Japanese person is Ginger, though? <laughs> what? Motherfucker has red hair. He's looking like a fucking Von Austria. He's friends with Japanese culture. For many times, this ocean guy was speculated to be another person from Japan, as he was the founder of Kararagi, one of the four great nations that... Yeah, and there is the line that Garfield says is an idiom of Hoshin, you know, trampled down like banan or something. It's, it's something about if you get, if you piss me off, I, it's, it's like this is like an all-out war or something. He was going around like subjugating... You know, cities and shit if they didn't listen to him, I guess. Resembles Japanese culture, but this theory has proven wrong when- Oh yeah, this is uh, the Isekai Quartet, right? Apparently, he actually shows up in Isekai Quartet. 
Unfortunately, we're not going to watch that until we finish Overlord and Tanya. Who the fuck knows when Overlord's going to happen, right? This is, is going to be like five-year plan in the making. When we saw that he was just a regular man born in the Wizio world who really liked his friend's culture. This important piece of information was shown in Isekai Quartet's movie. The most crazy revelations only being in a Shibi show is just insane to me. Classic. ReZero. Super important easter eggs and, and uh, revelations being shown in side stories, little break time shorts, right? Isekai Quartet, they love sprinkling it in. That's why the side stories are so important to just like get a better basis of understanding for the show. And it's not even spoilers, it only enriches uh, the show because now you can theorize and think about the show at a bigger scale rather than being tunnel visioned. Like, the guy was not even a part of the novels until then. And if I were to tell you the amount of theories that can come out of this guy, we would stay talking about him for the rest of the video. Like, how do you drop a bombshell like this in a sh- Natsuki Subaru. True, it's weird name, so I've already remembered it. You still are a good girl, you haven't changed at all. You're a very good girl. Which- Oh, that's so troll. Cause like, uh... <sighs> Amelia... People think- <sighs> So- Right now, we're going with Minerva as Amelia's mom. Amelia could be twin sister of Satala, who knows, maybe Amelia is Satala, different version, different time. I don't fucking know. But one of the most important things that we figured out in season two, not figured out, but thought of is, let's not think of Amelia only being uh, like a couple, like a hundred something years old, 114-ish, right? Because like we're supposed to believe that Amelia was just raised in Elior Forest that we see in the trial. Then she gets frozen for a hundred years. And then she comes out, seven plus years pass, and that's where we're at right now with the current timeline. Well, eight now, I guess, right? But you could kind of assume that maybe that baby Amelia was also from the past somehow. And now with Hoshin, a being that existed pre-Calamity days, is saying you're still a good girl, you haven't changed at all. Is he referring to a version of Amelia in the past? Because he remembers her as a, but that would make, as a baby? That baby hasn't changed till now? Or is she talking about someone else that resembles Amelia? I don't know, but this is super fucking troll. A show that's not even a part of the story. What's even more insane is not being subscribed to the channel yet. So if you are not, what are you waiting for? It's the best way you can support me. So cons No, it's not. Subscribing doesn't do anything. Likes and comments honestly don't do shit either. It's about understanding who the YouTube algorithm is pushing your videos out to and making consistent videos on only that topic. This guy's best interest right now is most likely to just keep making ReZero videos. It's a new channel, Flugel, and it's pretty smart. This is exactly how you should be doing it. A brand new channel averaging this many views per video is fucking phenomenal. Now, once ReZero ends, then you're kind of fucked, right? That's the problem. See, like, we're getting off topic, but, you know, if you stick to a specific niche and only make videos like that, that's how you grow the fastest, but it might not be the most sustainable. So you need to understand how to have an exit plan. When ReZero stops airing, when there's not a new anime season, maybe he could cover light novel content and stuff like that, but it's a good strategy. In fact, a very optimized strategy, but you got to think beyond that. Consider doing it. Thanks. Anyway, recently we got to see a new witch cultist in season 3. Series Romani Conti. Who represents Roth. What would my exit plan be if I was Flugel? I mean, the only thing you can really do is understand what your audience wants and talk to them and make more videos about that concept, right? Maybe there is a way to just keep making more ReZero content. But like, do you want to be known for ReZero? That's the thing, right? That's the thing a lot of people don't understand. Like, do you want to be Mr. ReZero? Maybe you can, but like, even like people like Echidna, when it's ReZero's not airing, it's really hard for them to make content. They make a lot of views, right, per video, but you run out of that content because your channel's only about that. So it's got to be this delicate balance of, all right, let's scale the content up, let's scale the channel up by focusing on a niche and kind of like getting a big audience. And then off of that, you got to figure out how do I make them make them watch me for what I do. And you got to talk to them and try to figure out, all right, maybe there's potential for like Mushoku Tensei content. They're an isekai audience, right? Maybe you could then branch out to more isekai content. It's tricky. It's a very counterintuitive thing in YouTube where the best strategy to grow may limit your growth at the end. And the worst strategy to grow of what I'm doing with the horizontal, you know, horizontal investment may be the most sustainable because now people are watching me for my personality. I can just watch any show, talk about anything. I'm not 
tied to one specific thing. But at the same time, my growth early game will be much, much slow. I'm like a late carry hyper, like I'm like a late scaling hyper carry. Well, channels like this, as well as, you know, my second channel, right? These are early game, like scaling units, <laughs> you know, only make Beyblade, just keep making Beyblade, but you need to have an exit plan. And my exit plan is not really settled yet because there's so much more Beyblade content to farm, but just talk to your audience, understand what their interests are, vote something in, and try to make new content and evolve. Just by her name, you can probably figure out she has a relation with Petal Geese, as they are dressed by the same short name. But didn't you notice anything weird about her, especially around ear, eyes, even the flesh, which kind of hints at burn marks, could be frostburn if this is Fortuna. And if we think about when Amelia went berserk, Fortuna was indeed frozen by Amelia's ice. So we, is it Fortuna? Maybe. On her face, silver hair, amethyst eyes, and pointy ears yep. is a combination of traits that not many people have. And oh well, here they are. As far as we know, there are only three characters with this appearance. Amelia and Satellan, who are half elves, and Fortuna, Amelia's auntie. Fortuna mm -hmm. was extremely attached to Petalgeus, and she even showed to have feelings for him. But this is the thing. Again with the Flugel and the Sage example. When things are a bit too obvious, I feel that Tape is literally baiting us. He's intentionally making us think in one specific way to make us not think of any other possibilities. Then he's gonna hit us in the back of the fucking head with a steel chair and be like, psych, it wasn't her after all. But she got killed by his hands in the Elder Forest. But what if she didn't die? You see, when you start connecting the pieces together, serious physical appearance, her mm -hmm. obsession with Petalgeus, and even the presence of Pandora on her death, everything yep. points to her being actually Fortuna. Yep. They are even seen using the same magical element, fire magic. Yeah, fire magic, temperature magic. People don't understand how ice and fire can be the same thing of why Puck is the great spirit of fire. But if you done high school, you know, or even like physical chemistry, stuff like that, right? It's just temperature going in, temperature going out. There is no concept of cold. It's all about minus or plus heat. This year has been going on in the novel community for a long time, and it's still not really confirmed, but- And there's some, and even if the voice actor is different, I don't think this is a definitive, uh, like, fact. We're metagaming right now, and sometimes, right? For example, Tower of God, season one to season two, there's Bomb, and then there's Veal. If you check the voice actors, holy shit, it's the same person. We're metagaming, or it's like, yeah, it's the same fucking character. But even if they were different, I don't think this, you know, disproves that Fortuna could be serious. And beyond the similarities here, even thematically, everything that Sirius did to lash out on Amelia, to call her out on exactly how she looks like, saying it's disgusting, that's the exact opposite that Fortuna does, right? Even like the magics, right? Fire versus ice. It's basically two sides of the same coin, Fortuna and Sirius. There's a lot of parallels and opposites of what Fortuna did and what Sirius is doing. Which makes me think that this is probably Fortuna. And sometimes, you know, maybe we're overthinking. And the most simple answer is indeed the answer. But knowing a show like this, it's never that easy. The voice actor is not the same? Oh man, I'm starting to feel up. So let me know in the comments down below who you think she actually is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. By the time I was recording this, the opening for season 3 was not out. But look what we just- I'm looking. What is the secret here? She's hanging upside down. The background image is purple stuff that I can't really figure out. There's a spotlight casted on her. And there's a bunch of chains. And she's swinging left to right. There's nothing else that she's doing that I can't tell. Uh, something about this part of the rope. She's hiding something. No, no, she's just holding onto the rope here. What am I missing here? God, this scene of Sirius is mm. very important. And why? Why? Why is it? You ask me. You see, there was an event in China where these tarot cards were offered to those who bought the physical books of the novels. And we why are tarot cards? Oh, this is so troll. Oh, that's so fucking troll. That's so troll. This is something like, listen, listen, I'm trying to do my due diligence to cover cut content, okay? But now you're telling me I gotta get this one specific event for the tarot cards and then the art visuals now hints that, yeah, look at the chains, look at the bet to the use, you know, it's hanging upside down. There's being puppeteered, probably uh, alluding to this is, you know, Fortuna, right? There's a seal right behind. I, this is clearly telling us that Sirius is Fortuna.
we have this card of Petalgis and Fortuna. Petalgis and Ceres are exactly in the same position. Yeah. And in the card itself, we can see Fortuna cuffed in some weird golden chains that so troll. totally not resemble Ceres. So on, troll. Topic. Enough of hedging us. <laughs> Amazing art of Wilhelm. And just reveal it already. So I just talked about how Ceres is using the same magical elements as Fortuna. Which you may think, what? Isn't one using ice and the other fire? If you are not really into how magic works in recent Science. Years, you probably think Heat. that Ram and Emilia share the same magic element, as they both create ice to fight. However, this is not the case, as Ram's element is water and Emilia is fire. The fire element actually allows you to control the temperature of your surroundings. Yep. So basically what Emilia, Fortuna and Pac do is freezing Heat the water magic. particles in the air to the point it forms ice, while Ram creates water itself but in the ice state. Although in season 1 they even had different colors, as Ram's ice was blue and Emilia was more of a greenish color, they oh. are all blue in season 2 and 3, so the only difference really is how they are created. And this magic topic leads us to the next detail. A lot of people have the misconception that Ram killed Subaru two times. The first one in a match. Yeah, so Ram is the one that kills Subaru in episode 7, and it's it's a... Uh... It's not followed up, but like, like it, it basically Ram says, my sister is too nice, as in Ram is, Ram is very sassy and hostile, but to Subaru, even at that time, she couldn't bear to make eye contact or see him before killing him. You see wind magic happening, even his leg being chopped off while he's running away, right? That was Ram. That was not Ram. That was all, you know, wind magic. So Ram actually killed. Mansion and the second one in the forest. However, the second death was actually not Ram. Obviously, she did torture him for a while in order yep. to get information about who he was and what he was planning. The guy literally said he would leave, but had a knife on him and went to a mountain where he could see Emily's room, covered in a witch's sand, which is literally associated with the people who slaughter Ram's entire village and family. So yeah, although he did not deserve this treatment, it is understandable. But the point is, Ram. A lot of people will never understand this part, though. A lot of people still use, like, I can't believe Rem tortured Subaru. She's a disgusting girl. I'm so glad that I super rejected Rem, but it's just like, brother, you were just, like, nitpicking on things that you have no understanding of. You don't understand the story, the motivations of different characters, and the fact that she goes on to redeem herself by sacrificing herself to, you know, kill all the fucking uh, mob beast because of the curse that could happen to Subaru, right? Like, there's a lot. And then after that, season three content, right? Not season three, arc three content. Can't believe people actually use that example as like, yep, Rem deserved to be rejected. It's just like, you're such a fucking scrambled brain. Which is literally associated with the people who slaughter Rem's entire village and family. So yeah, although he did not deserve this treatment, it is understandable. But the point is, Rem, her sister, was watching and did help on this matter. As she cut Subaru's leg with her wind magic even yep. before the torture scene. You see, Ram's magic affinity is water, and Ram's is wind. wind. So she was the one who cut his leg and also ended up suffering, putting an end to his life on the spot. I mean, even Ram says it in the end. Exactly. Talking about the witch's scent, there are only three characters who can smell it. The first we all know is obviously... And it's so weird. It's so weird how there is no pattern of behavior on like who can seemingly smell it. Ram, who had suspicions of Suru being a part of the witch cult because of him smelling like... Why can Rem smell but Ram can't? What is the difference between them? They're only twins, but one has a horn, one doesn't. Is that that simple? Miasma. Another one is Ryuzu. And Ryuzu, why can she smell it? Fuck if I know. Can the other one smell it? Not just Shima, but like Bilma and the other clones, like... Shima, <laughs> the one clone who was wearing the white robe in season 2, who trapped him along with Garfield. Yeah, and Garfield doesn't smell the witch's scent but i think there's cut content where garfield can sense that subaru and al are kind of similar as in like they have an isekai smell i'm not sure how true that is along with garfield due to the same suspicions as ram and no garfield was not the one who was able to smell it a demi-human like him can differentiate people by their smells but not actually smell miasma accurately like the others do beatrice can also somehow smell it but it's not the same ability as Ram and Shima, who can both meticulously smell even... Vehicle can smell it, but it's not the same? Trees can also somehow smell it, but it's not the same ability as Ram and Shima, who can both meticulously smell even the small amounts of it. Like, Ram was able to smell it all the way through the cavern where the witch gold is at captured. And the last one is... Uh, this is the spoiler part, I think. Um, I don't care about character designs, it's fine. It says skip from 806 to 823 or something, right? 
eight no no eight twenty to eight thirty two. This is actually not spoilers. Oh, interesting. Hopefully we can watch this. Um, another thing to comment about is better use. You know, better use constantly mentioned that like the witch's love hangs so thickly upon you, as if better use was upset that Subaru had more miasma than better use himself. That's what I remember from episode 15, season 1. Now, maybe there's different ways of sensing that Subaru had miasma without Betrigus actually being able to detect it, but there's something odd there. And another thing is the fingers as well, right? Betrigus is not even like the main fingers, but like his other cultists, like foot soldiers. You know how they ran around Subaru and they were like, they respected him, they bowed? Why would they bow? At that point, I thought, well, it's because they can sense the miasma from Subaru. What else could they sense? I don't know, why would, they, why would they show respect if they can't realize, well, like, why? Does this not mean that they can smell or sense? Or did, or did the fucking gospel tell them, if a fucking tracksuit kid shows up, you should bow because he's a chosen one? I don't know. She's Reese, one of the only surviving Oni other than Ram and Ram. She surviving Oni? Is only present in the Slatid on the night of the attack on the Oni village. Something was poured into her here by a mysterious figure, which then gave her the ability to smell the witch's miasma. The Okay, this is it. Okay, we can't. We all got it. Now it's Capella stuff, right? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Which gold is at Capfield. And the last one is Reese, one of Replay the that. only surviving Oni other than Ram and Ram. She is only present in the Slatid on okay. the night of the attack on the Oni village. Something was poured into her here by a. Something was poured into her here? Ram and Ram. She is only present in the Slatid on the night of the attack on the Oni village. Something was poured into her here by a mysterious figure, which then gave her the ability to smell the witch's meow. Something showed up and gave her the ability to smell which is miasma. That's basically the gist of it. I have no fucking clue. But let's skip ahead to 832 because there is some season 3 cut content, I think. So, hold up. 834. Hold up, hold up. Let me do frame by frame. Uh, come on, here we go. The author contradict himself constantly on this matter, so we are not really sure if Oni are all able to smell it or not. As one time he wrote Reese only achieved it after the attack of Capilla, but then Echidna says on the grid if that Onis were created to smell miasma. Then in Q&As he says that maybe because they are beasts they can smell it, but then Ram can't do it. How such a That's right, the witch beast can also smell the miasma, right? And Ram, well, horn, isn't that it? can smell it, but then Ram can't do it. How such a powerful race didn't predict the attack of the literal guys who smell like miasma. And That's another very good point. They just showed up out of fucking nowhere. The only clan just got jumped. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe Roswell did some extra preparations to allow this to happen because he did just kind of idly sit by because he knew that this is what the game plan was from his grimoire. Maybe he allowed a situation where the witch's miasma was left undetected by the Oni clan. He just kind of like smuggled them in. Who smell like miasma and they supposedly can smell it. It's a total mess. But the three confirmed are these. So let's- That's so weird. Two Onis, two both with horns. Ram doesn't have a horn. And Rizu, Shima, because? What's different about Shima? It, it, so it's not even all Rizus either, right? It's Bilma can't do it, right? It's only Shima. And the difference between Shima and the rest is that she actually went in to save Garf during the trial. What other differentiation is there? I don't fucking know. So let's stay like that and leave the two for another time. Another interesting detail can be seen, or actually- She is the one that indeed became Omega. But um, it's like, the Ryuzus are all just like uh, failed experiments though. Isn't, isn't like Shima, even though she is the one basically that turned into Omega at the end, didn't all the different Ryuzus kind of share that like Echidna soul shit? Or was it just Shima? And if it's just Shima, then that makes a little bit more sense. And Subaru, Biko, why can, Biko can sense it, right? No, Biko can, but not to the same degree. Because Biko was created by Echidna. Maybe that makes sense. I don't fucking know, bro. This is weird. I wonder why Tape is being so secretive about who can sense the miasma and not. Why? Why is this such an important secret? And there's also a distinction between regular witch's miasma and specifically for 
the Witch of Envy sent, right? I remember there's like cut content where there's like different types of miasma and in the stench of the witch. And the one that Subaru gives off the most is like he has like the witch like the witch of envy satala specific scent. And not anyone else has that kind of shit. I don't know. Maybe that's not even fucking real shit anymore because it was only web novel stuff. Actually heard on Subaru's phone ringtone. Do you remember it? Yeah. This ringtone is actually from a very popular British novel named Dog of Flanders. It got an anime adaptation in 1975. And Why? this little song is actually Subaru's ringtone. But the most interesting Why? part is that this story is about a boy named Nello and his dog Patrash. Already see What? Patrash was the dog's name and the guy's name is Al? Actually Subaru's ringtone. But the most interesting part is that this story is about a boy named Nello and his dog Boy named Nell? And a dog named Patrash. Dog Patrash. Already see the resemblance? It's the same name Subaru gave to his dragon. Subaru yeah. liked this series so much that he even took it to a new world. But actually, there was a certain someone that named the city of Flanders! Forest of Elves, Austria Mansion. They're kind of nearby. Leginica, Flanders, way before him. Another weird coincidence. So we just talked about Subaru liking anime and even giving a name for his pet based on it. So if we actually... Yeah, he loves silver-haired waifu figurines. Take a closer look on his room we saw in the first trial. We can see that he really was a complete weeb. I mean... Isekai protagonists with a lot of figurines and anime posters. Some of these characters are all are silver hair from Aesthetic War, Julie Sigtuna from Ab Oh, it's actual anime references. Aesthetic War, Julie Sigtuna from Absolute Duo, and the first cover of the detective is already dead. You cool. can clearly see that this guy always. I guess that's. Well, un un unless the light novel specifically mentioned those, it could be just Studio White Fox, you know, repping those anime because they love it, or maybe. Tape is actually a fan of those. Said a thing for silver haired girls. I mean. But don't worry, Ram fans. He also got the blue haired maid on the light novel illustration. Okay, here's another. Is this blue or is this purple? That is not the same color as this. That's reaching. That's like. I wouldn't consider this blue. This is more dark blue purple. It's on the light novel illustration. Okay, here's another secret that was hidden from the anime. At okay. least superficially. When Subaru and Emilia are talking for the first time in episode 1, Subaru mentions that his country is the most far at east. And Emilia mm. replies that there's no such country more at east than Laginica. Past it, there's just the great waterfall. Water waterfall. With this, you can already guess what I'm trying to say. The Flat real Earth. world is flat. In fact, there's also plot lines that correlate with this. Like the white whale, who was stated to rest at a great waterfall, or Sekhmet. Did he? White Whale rests at the Great Waterfall? I thought the dragon did. The dragon is beyond the Great Waterfall and Sekhmet pushed them beyond there. Man, the Witch of Sloth, who died by falling there. There's even a panel in the manga with its drawing. Remember early in the anime when yes. Emilia stole an insignia? Regarding the flat world, I would love to get a confirmation that pre-Calamity times, the Rezero world was still flat. Because when I think about how Satala, Witch of Envy, grazed half of the world which half was destroyed lagunica valakia gusteco kararagi i don't know Wh which which areas were actually attacked and destroyed because there's nothing kind of that hints at anything like that like a rebuilding of civilization or stuff like that and i was going through th schizo like theories about how potentially the half the world is literal and that's why w this world is flat world. You know what I mean? Like, the sphere got, like, cut into half. I don't fucking know by the Witch of Envy, but to get some, like, confirmations that pre-Calamity times that the Great Waterfalls did exist and the world is flat would be nice. I mean, Alec Hoshin showing up, what did people think back then, right? They probably think he's a person beyond the Great Waterfall. Or did the statement of beyond the Great Waterfall happen after that fact? Who knows? Go with its drawing. Remember early in the anime when mm. Emilia stole an insignia lit up for Felt, marking yeah. her as the fifth and final candidate for the royal selection? Upon seeing this, Reinhardt swooped in and Lolicon. basically kidnapped her, thinking Faith had just handed him the discovery of a lifetime. Why? Because along with being the fifth chosen candidate... But it's so important, right? Because right now, literally, the kingdom is fucked. The royal family just died out. We're, we don't have a leader... We need to have five members in this fucking lobby to queue up. And during this time when there's so much instability, bordering nations could probably attack. Isn't it like Valakia and Lugunica have a lot of history of like, you know, fighting against each other? I'm not sure how Gusteco works, but 
it's definitely Reinhardt's probably like, yes, finally, I found the last fucking person. We can finally save Lagunica. Every of a lifetime. Why? Because along with being the fifth chosen candidate, Fels got these distinctive features. Blonde hair, red eye, fang. Blonde hair and crimson eyes. Just like the Fang. Fang is also important too. In this frame, the fang isn't shown, but because Fang is also very important, apparently. Hair and crimson eyes. Just like the dead royal family of Lagunica. Seriously, compare Fel Fang. Right there. Fang. Felt to the old royal family members. You can clearly see the resemblance. Felt Plus, also in has episode a fang. one of season three, we learned from Julius that there was a princess who was supposedly kidnapped as a baby 14. 15. 15 years ago. This shit is felt. Years before the events at the loot house. The exact same age as felt. Yeah, 14 before the loot house and exactly the time matches up. Now with Capella showing up, Capella says that she is Lugunica, last name. And she doesn't have the exact same eye color. It's like more pink, but I'm willing to look through it. What could Capella be at that point? Is Capella the secret kidnap one? No, it's most likely felt. Capella then is a secret love child that was never in the Lugunica before, and that's why she didn't die of the plague. Did Capella herself actually kill everybody and escape? Those are the two theories that I have. And then beyond that is just Pandora. Just fucking slap Pandora and the plague was a fucking lie. I don't know. Felt coincidence? I think not. And we know that the Rezero. Another thing? To note is how Priscilla, and there probably isn't a frame here, Priscilla also has hair color that is similar. It's not the same. Her hair is more orange. It's not blonde. And her eyes are very red, and she has no fang, which makes me think, even if she's not a direct descendant of Lugunican royalty blood, perhaps she has some traces of it. That's why she has these features that almost matches felt. I, I don't know. Coincidence? I think not. And we know that the Rezero world has some differences to ours in the spelling of things, like yeah. fruits and vegetables. So it's only natural that other things, like time and clocks, also work differently. Instead of wearing a watch, people carry a magic stone called Crystals. the Seer Crystal. Day yeah. and night are called bright hours and dark hours. They change colors. From midnight to 6 a.m., the stone in the center shows the wind element. From it's pretty cool how in Rosal's mansion, you see the different lamps that's like lighting up the mansion and they'll like switch colors as the time passes throughout the day. 6 to 1 p.m. it shows the fire element. From 1 to 6 p.m. it shows the water element. And from 6 to midnight it shows the earth element. How is this information useful? It is not. But it's a cool curiosity. Although these things are not actually useful. Like they don't even show what hours are but the color and you have to carry a stone in your pocket just yeah. to get yourself. Watches are just so much better. Okay, this one is quite funny I guess. You all remember Echidna's suspicious tea, right? Yeah. That one our boy swallowed vigorously in one gulp like it was a shot, and after knowing what it is, almost poked it. Yeah, right. We know that thing helped him activate his authority of sloth, yep. but that's not what we are here to talk about. What exactly- What was the body fluid? Was it our piss? Was it our sweat? Was it our saliva? Is the body fluid the tea was made of? And my answer is, everything you could imagine. Yeah, from saliva, tears, sweat to those things down there. The author stated How? in Q&A is that this divine cocktail was made from whatever Echidna was feeling like. A divine cocktail? Whatever Echidna was feeling that day? This divine cocktail was made from whatever Echidna was feeling like. So what did Subaru actually drink? A mix? Everything. A specific one? We don't really know. The Maybe drink fucking Echidna's piss. And the cookies. There's cookies and biscuits too. I think that the cookies and biscuits have her pubes in it. Only thing we know is that he didn't really enjoy it, as there is a passage in the novel that says his fetishes are vanilla. But he would reconsider this if it was Emilia or Ram, though. He's a and vanilla this time person. I will not let your own mind think about this one. All the right. second ending of the anime has a song made by Emilia's voice actor herself, Rie Takahashi. You probably knew that, but if we pay attention to it, we can see Emilia's daily routine. Like mm -hmm. any other person, she wakes up and goes to the bathroom to brush her teeth. But what is wrong with this? This opening was made on season one, which means that Emilia was still contracted with Pac, and on his contract, the cat was basically locking all of her old memories, and yep. did not allow Emilia to see herself- Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite often in ReZero, the anime, reflections in the mirror, reflections of other people in other people's eyes. When Emilia finally accepts Subaru, you can see Subaru in Emilia's eyes. When Subaru is always looking at Emilia, Emilia's present in the eyes. Off in the mirror. Pak had taken care of her hair and brushed her teeth until then. So this is a huge plot hole that even the author admitted on social media it was a mistake for. <laughs> it's 
so fucking sweaty that the author has to go out and make a statement saying, I apologize for the inconsistencies of this one frame in an ending showing Amelia's day to day life where herself was reflected in the mirror. I apologize on behalf of the reserve community. Like, what? What are we doing, bro? It doesn't have to be that deep, but it is. The show handles itself that way. The community that watches this shit will now place the show and the author as such a pedestal and have expectations where even a frame like this is like, yup, this is inconsistent. My immersion is broken. I can't watch this anymore. It's a huge plot hole that even the author admitted on social Bruh. media. It was a mistake for putting her looking at the mirror alone. Kind of a creepy one. And we saw in season two that... Tap here right now, fucking twit longer is apologizing, bro. Please don't cancel me. The first time she saw herself in the wild was on the water reflection. The first opening of the anime also holds a lot of details in Easter eggs. First of all, we all can notice this opening is basically a representation of a return mm. by death loop, as it yep. starts with Subaru reviving and ends with Subaru dying again, which makes a beginning of the end and the end of the beginning. A loop that even works in reverse. Even some shots like Ram turning her head downwards in the normal version, as she started by losing trust of Subaru, and in the reverse opening, she turns her head upwards, symbolizing her development in the last loop. We can find other so sweaty. By pausing at exactly 10 seconds, where some impact frames flash representing the Witch of Envy, who just gave Subaru is written by Beth. We can clearly see the silver hair, pointy ears, and the witch. even the illustrations we saw in the book Subaru was written. There is another couple key frames. Is this castle supposed to be the one that's floating on top where, not floating, but necessary, but at the very top where Echidna's living in? I don't know. What is this shit? And other secrets by We're in the middle of a recording session, and another monkey from the second channel begs for the Babel reactions. I think that you deserve to go on a two-week vacation for this. Goodbye. Pausing at exactly 10 seconds, where some impact frames flash represent- What are these different frames? Let's see. The Witch of MB. Subaru. Oh, come on. What is this supposed to be? Is this a dragon? If the dragon has hands, is this Patrash? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, let's keep going. What the fuck is this, bro? Uh, I kind of see numbers, not really. Hands? Invisible hands? I don't... I, is this supposed to be the Witch of Envy in the, in the invisible hands? I don't fucking know. This, these arts are fucking creepy. I don't know. It's, 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 what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Keep going. Come on. Uh, this is, again, the dark thing. The dark thing with the hand is going after the dragon. Is the dragon being crucified? Is the dragon's like T-posing on us? Then you see Subaru overlaid on top. What else is there? Let's see. That's the Witch of Envy, right? You know, the ears, the white hair. The art style def- And then this castle is very interesting. Is, this might just be the Razal Manor. I don't know. Maybe this is supposed to hint at, you know, the break time episode where we saw Echidna, Biako, and Juice, you know, in the castle. But maybe it's not. Uh, what the fuck is this color? I don't know. Uh, more Witch of Envy bullshit? It's too cryptic. It's way too cryptic. I have no clue. Clearly see the silver hair, pointy ears, and even the illustrations we saw in the books. Yeah, and then the illustration, this is where it was told that she, like, grazed half of the world, right? What is she encompassing here? Is this a specific building that she's destroying? Does that building matter? Or is this just like an arbitrary random structure to kind of portray the Witch of Envy's like destruction? The book Subaru was reading when he first got to the mansion. Other interesting details can be found in 30 seconds. Here, we can... Uh, the shadow, the reflections on the ground. See Subaru looking at... <laughs> Subaru is looking at Amelia, but Amelia is facing away. More symbolism that like... It's a one-sided direction, and Amelia does not see Subaru as a man just yet. Amelia, and the reflection in the ground is the representation of Subaru's mind. In his own mind, he just sees Amelia for her features, not for who she actually is. Mmm, kind of how Regulus would behave. You know how we keep making theories, not theories, but comparisons of like Regulus and Subaru, a being that is so superficial, a being that could be Subaru if he had these OP powers and never was corrected during his lessons. And desires as a person, and that's why he only sees her back instead of her face. If we go forward a little bit to this next scene, we can clearly see that none of the Subarus are looking at Emilie's face, no mm. matter how many times he returned by that. This plotline Because he was always doing it for himself, rather than doing it for Amelia, and at this point in the story, Subaru recognizes that Amelia even called him out for it, and he says, yeah, 
and even then, I still want to be by your side. Connects perfectly with the developments of the Arc 3, or even the disaster of the Pride Leaf. If you know, you know. And do you actually remember how many times Subaru had died in Season 1 and 2? It was exactly 17 seven? Seven times. 17! And <laughs> nice. Nice little leeway. Now we can watch all 17 Subaru Death Explained. That was a great, you know, uh, connection. You can watch me explain and rank all of them in this video. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. All and right. I see you there. This guy, honestly, like, this is not a brand new channel. This guy definitely has other channels, right? Because, like, I, I don't think that this is the best video ever made, but for a brand new channel to come in understanding how the algorithm works, presumably, maybe it's just a coincidence that he's only doing ReZero content, but I think that's very smart. And then the whole presentation of it, it didn't feel like a beginner YouTuber. I feel like this is, like, Maybe he's a couple, you know, extra tries, but fantastic channel. Please go check Mr. Flugel out. Here's the link. Give him a like. Check out his channel if you like. I definitely want to farm the other videos too. That was fantastic. And I will see you guys next time.